Thank you, Mr. Chairman. To our ranking member as well, thank you for holding this important hearing today. Now, Ms. Young, thank you for being here. Um, it's been an honor to work with you and to learn from you throughout the years. And Mr. Chairman, I had the great honor of learning uh, from Shalanda, not just during my time now in the Senate, but during my time in the House. So, Director Young, congratulations on this very important appointment. Now, while there's many positive aspects to the budget, I'm going to zero in on some areas that I think that the Congress must improve upon as we get into appropriation season and we're working on uh, the next, what I hope is not an omnibus, but that we pass this in uh, regular order, if you will. Um, Director Young, last year, President Biden released an infrastructure plan and that infrastructure plan pointed out that um, he was requesting 18 billion to upgrade and replace aging veteran affairs facilities. Now, I know you're not the VA secretary, um, but it's important to me to raise these issues because there's been a recent announcement that because of the passage of the Mission Act, which is being pointed to for the reason for this new document that came to Congress, 174 closures of CBOX across America in every state, four in New Mexico in Hispanic and Native American communities. And I'm not okay with this. Um, I'm going to find every way that I can to stop this from happening. And so, hence, you're the first uh, person I've had the honor to visit with, and so you're going to get the brunt of this, and I apologize for that. Um, I know you're looking at uh, this particular budget. Is it correct that you asked for $300 billion for the VA? Um, we are asking for $135 billion for the B VA, their top line and discretionary. And what's that increase? What's the percentage? Um, about a 29% uh, increase from the 2021 level. So that's important to note that there was an increase here. Um, of that, I believe, is it $3 billion for infrastructure? Yes, sir. So if it's $3 billion for infrastructure, I just want to encourage the team that uh, worked with you uh, for this specific budget part uh, submission, uh, just to look at the infrastructure package, which asked for $18 billion. Now, continuing to sleuth, I was able to find some other documents looking at the needs that exist for the VA. And in one of those documents, which is called the Annual Strategic Capital Investment Planning Process, the estimate was $72 billion to $88 billion for capital infrastructure over the next 10 years to maintain and enhance infrastructure for the VA. That's much more than the 18 that was even requested, which would have been a good start. But I think even through testimony and through uh, newsletters um, and uh, publications, the VA secretary said it's only a down payment, and that's referring to the $18 billion. Mm -hmm. Now, if there would have been a significant showing in the bipartisan infrastructure bill, which I also supported, um, I don't know that we'd have these 174 potential closures. Then there's a claim that there's going to be 255 replacement facilities for these 174 closures by the VA. No one's told me that the one's coming to New Mexico, so my veterans are going to have to try to find care somewhere in a state that has a shortage of primary health care uh, uh, physicians in 32 of 33 counties and a shortage of mental behavioral health physicians in every one of our 33 counties. And we're not different than the rest of America. So you see where I'm going with this. Um, I, I want to see what we can do to, to fix this, to get us back on track, to address this. I'm going to work with my colleagues, Democratic and Republican, being a freshman junior senator, to stop the closure of these CBOCs. Our veterans deserve better. And especially with a budget that's $5.8 trillion. I think that we can do better. Um, so I'm going to be pushing um, on this, and I'm going to be vocal about this. Um, now, I, I want to thank you for the work that you are doing in the area of mental and behavioral health. Now, you've been asked several times. You've explained those provisions very clearly. Um, and, and I just want to encourage the administration and us as members of the Senate and in Congress to continue to push while one of my colleagues did say this was bad, and I think it was Senator Sanders, this was bad before, it's only gotten worse, and it has. We're losing too many brothers and sisters in our communities, family members, and across America, and we've got to fix that and make that so much better. Um, so, Ms. Young, um, if you're able, well, I'll submit these questions to the record to adhere to time. Um, I look forward to learning more from you, seeing how we can get in front of this with VA closures, but continue to say we can also increase investment to mental and behavioral health availability. And with that, Mr. Chairman, uh, I yield back. Thank you.
Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, hello, we speak again. 